Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Extractions and I. Today we're talking about cadmium. Cadmium is a toxic metal. Uh, it gets lumped in with lead a lot. It's very similar to lead. Toxic metal, uh, it's very useful in a lot of things, but that use has to outweigh its toxicity concerns. The biggest use case is still this thing here. So this is a pack of NICAD batteries, nickel cadmium batteries. Some of you watching this video may have never seen a pack of NICADs or, you know, a NICAD battery. Not that they look like anything special. It's all, you know, internal. These batteries used to be, you know, the number one sort of battery for like small applications, like little battery packs like this. In the 80s and 90s, and I think even the early 2000s, couldn't really compete with NICAD batteries. And the toxicity isn't so much if I try and eat one of these batteries, even though that wouldn't be good. It's more so disposal because a lot of the battery companies sort of dodged out and didn't hold themselves accountable for the disposal of batteries. So what happens to most batteries is people just throw them in the normal bin. And in a lot of countries, that waste is then incinerated. Cadmium gets, you know, vaporized and sort of spreads out into your environment. And that's quite bad. I know in most countries they probably have messages on the bins they do here, you know, no batteries or, you know, it probably says on the batteries, don't don't throw them away. But you're kidding yourself if, if you don't believe that the average consumer doesn't throw these in the bin. NICAD batteries are pretty much getting obsolete now. I would like to say it's because of the environmental concerns, but really it's because they're getting replaced by better products, which are the, the lithium polymer batteries, the lipo packs, just lithium batteries in general, or just better batteries. Although there are still some use cases for them because they're very good at providing like surge current like a lot of current really quickly it can take a lot of abuse because you know they're like steel enclosures much more than the lipo batteries so there's not really a risk of these bursting into flames and you can absolutely abuse these you know i could throw this battery uh, pack around and i'm not going to worry about burning my house down the same can't be said about lipo batteries so um it's a little bit ironic that the last use case of these sort of battery packs are in children's toys rc cars i think i got this from a remote control plane or something that i used to have and i assume that's because you don't want the child burning the house down with their lipo battery pack in their remote control car um, and for that you expose them to a little bit of cadmium rather than having them burn in a fire. So it's a bit of a trade-off, but um, it seems to make sense. So NICAD batteries very quickly becoming a bit of a relic, but inside them is some cadmium metal, which um, isn't, you know, a very common element. Why the fuck would anyone want cadmium or open a battery to get the cadmium out? This is not a tutorial. I don't recommend it. Cadmium is a terribly toxic metal, and I'm sure it says on the battery, absolutely do not open these. Um, and there's just no reason for you to do this, <laughs> I suppose. There's no reason for me to do it, but I just thought I'd say that because obviously we're dealing with a toxic metal and fuck, you know all this, yeah. Okay, so my plan is to take this apart, cut open the battery casing with this pipe cutter here and the cadmium I'm going to be just putting into a little bit of water here. Let's just uh, get the metal out and see what we're dealing with. Actually, just had a great idea. What I should do first is I should check if this has any charge on it. <laughs> um, that was something I didn't do during my lithium battery video and um, you guys let me know about it, which is fair enough. Um, I should really check if this bloody thing is charged or not. I'm sure I haven't turned it on in years, but we wanna make sure it's completely uh, flat before we go about cutting it open. Oh, that's still three volts.
a hell of a lot more messy than I was hoping it would be, but uh, I believe we've done it. There was two layers and they sort of look very similar. Here you can see that layer, that black layer has that greenish tint to it. And so that's the nickel oxides, whereas this here has that yellow tint. And that's our cadmium, or at least that's what I think. Anyway, the yellow tinted one is the cadmium oxide and, and there's the nickel oxide. So hopefully I separated the two because our process won't really select for cadmium. Yeah, we're not chemically separating them. So hopefully we've physically separated the nickel and the, and the cadmium enough here. Um, and, you know, and all the steel, which, you know, is still pretty contaminated with cadmium in there. Rather than opening up any more of these batteries, why don't we see if we can dissolve this up in some nitric acid, uh, and then we'll be able to pretty clearly see where if we've got nickel that goes green, uh, we've got lots of nickel in there. Um, but if it just dissolves to a clearish solution, then it'll just be cadmium nitrate dissolved in there, which, you know, horrendously unhealthy. But at least it's what we want. We don't need the nickel, but um, I'll keep it here for the moment in case I've got it wrong, and that's the cadmium, and this is our nickel, or, or something like that. We'll see how we go. in a certain light this does look a little green <laughs> maybe we can just fix it in post how about I just remove the green yeah see now look there's no nickel in there we've removed all the nickel that was easy <laughs> just pure cadmium left <laughs> back to reality uh, why don't we dissolve up some of this other material in some nitric acid in a separate container and see um, just how green that one goes because I don't know whether maybe this is just trace nickel or <laughs> the whole thing could be nickel um, and that could be the cadmium, so why don't we dissolve that up and see what colour that goes. Real science here, just looking at the colours things go, but yeah, um, why don't we get that happening. Alright, we haven't made that much progress, uh, both solutions are kind of green. This one, it's it's hard to see that it's green. It's got a lot of, I assume it's graphite suspended in there. Once again, I'm just assuming I've been wrong about most of the things so far, so I'm not gonna say anything with a great deal of confidence. So I'm just gonna leave these be for, you know, a week. All right, a week later, we can see uh, this metal has mostly dissolved and it hasn't gone terribly a lot more green. I mean, there's obviously nickel in there, but this one, um, a lot of the metal hasn't dissolved but it's gone quite green. My assessment of the situation is that this is mostly cadmium with a little bit of nickel in it, and this is mostly nickel with a little bit of cadmium in it. So I might add a little bit more nitric acid to both of them just to fully dissolve up all these metals, and then we can go about chemically separating out the nickel and the cadmium, which I believe can be done. So uh, we obviously did not successfully physically separate them, but I don't know how I would have looking at what I took apart. So yeah, anyway. A little bit of gentle heat and everything has dissolved. Well, not everything actually, because there's a little bit of powdered metal at the bottom there, but it's decided to attach itself to the stir bar. So it's either uh, like the steel from the casing or uh, it could be nickel, I suppose. Is nickel metal, is nickel metal attracted to magnets? I think so. It will eventually dissolve into the acidic solution, but um, don't need it. We also want to give this solution a quick filter because it looks like there was some papery, plasticky nonsense in there as well. So we'll filter that off because we want to uh, collect our product by filtration at the end of it. Now we have our filtered cadmium and nickel solution. How will we chemically separate the two? Well, I have a theory and uh, it seems to be backed up in literature. We're going to precipitate out the ions with sodium carbonate. Now what this will do is it will precipitate cadmium carbonate but also nickel hydroxide. Then we can add ammonia. Um, now nickel hydroxide should get re back, sort of as a tetraamine nickel species 
and we should see that as a very distinct color change which I think we've seen on this channel before and it should leave us with our cadmium carbonate untouched um, I'm unsure if that's going to be correct but we'll, we'll have to see so we're expecting to see a lot of green precipitate come out and then hopefully we can get all the green to redissolve into the ammonia and just leave us with a reasonably white um, cadmium carbonate Like everything's precipitated out it's not really settling out it's quite thick uh, it took a while for all that pre to precipitate out but it's fine because i'm making some fucking ikea furniture and it's fucking dreadful and why is it so hard anyway sorry uh back to the chemistry um now we're adding in the ammonia Right, we can see that beautiful color of the complex nickel back in solution. The bottom layer, obviously the precipitate, uh, it doesn't look very white, it still looks very green. I don't know how deceptive that is because it's in a solution of such a strongly colored liquid. So um, if we give it a quick filter, we're able to tell you know, what, what color that solid really is once we give it a bit of a wash with some excess ammonia. So we can definitely tell nickel has gone back into solution um, and there was a lot less precipitate than there was. So uh, potentially this is working. Okay, we're here the next day and that looks really good but that's because I've got my optimism filter on this is what it really looks like <laughs> it just looks like nickel hydroxide I did a little bit more literature searching and it turns out that cadmium does form a tetraamine cadmium species which will resolubilize the cadmium now we have to play the game of where's, where's the, the cadmium? cadmium is it here is this like mostly cadmium with a little bit of nickel. Is this where all cadmium is? Is the cadmium over here? Maybe there's no cadmium in here at all. There was cadmium somewhere. We dissolved up the whole battery. So the cadmium has to be somewhere here. <laughs> so we need a test for cadmium. So there's a very good test for cadmium and it involves a sulfide. You precipitate out cadmium sulfide, which is an awful yellow color. That is very easy to spot because of its awfulness. So for that we need a sulfide. We need to generate hydrogen sulfide or sodium sulfide. And I think I might have some. We'll have to check. Whoa, I think at the bottom of the desiccator there, that looks like a couple of crystals of the thing I need, potentially. On top of the new cupboard that I have built in the time that it took for the fucking cadmium to do some shit. So, well that's a weird background to put on there. I think it's the thing we need. Um, not that I can get this container open, but it's also several years old, but it should do the trick. Hopefully. Who knows? <laughs> All right, I got through it the usual way by uh, soaring through the lid. <laughs> Uh, everything turns yellow until you want it to turn yellow, in which case, then it doesn't. <laughs> it's not because there's no cadmium. There has to be cadmium in one of these fractions. There is cadmium there. I'm not crazy. There is cadmium there. So, yeah, I will think about what we're going to do next. All right, I've been in denial. I'm going to have to generate some hydrogen sulfide. I don't want to, but uh, I think that's the only way forward for this project. I thought it wouldn't work for separation because nickel sulfide will precipitate out when you put hydrogen sulfide through a nickel solution. But apparently it's only a basic solution uh, of nickel ions will precipitate out sulfide. So if it's acidic enough, then we should only precipitate out cadmium sulfide and leave the nickel in solution. 
once again, I could be wrong. I've been wrong about a lot of things to this video so far. So um, what it does mean is that we need to make all these solutions acidic, which is fine. I'll just have to add nitric acid, uh, you know, to counter all the ammonia in solution. But it does show the value of doing inorganic chemistry because as much as I've cocked up so far, I can still totally salvage it. If I was doing organic chemistry, everything would be tar by this point and there'd be no saving it. But uh, it's not. It's inorganic chemistry, so we just get to dissolve it all up again. So um, yes, I've got to make all these stuff acidic and then think about how I'm going to generate some hydrogen sulfide. All right, um, hello, this is my hydrogen sulfide generator. We're jumping around in the timeline a little bit here, but there was a whole video on me testing this and uh, and showing that it works to produce hydrogen sulfide. In there is a candle, <laughs> some sulfur, and some um, fucking charcoal. The reaction between the paraffin wax and the sulfur is what generates hydrogen sulfide. Um, this condenser sort of strips out a lot of the sulfur. And um, yeah, we've got an F-up here to, to, to pump the hydrogen sulfide through. It's, it's cooling at the moment, but um, when I put it back on the heat, it'll generate a bit more hydrogen sulfide and then and bubble it through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this hydrogen sulfide to detect any um, cadmium in our sample first, just to detect whether there's cadmium there. So what we should be seeing is in the acidic solution, if there's a yellow precipitate, this goddamn yellow, then it's uh, a positive test for cadmium. So we're gonna see where the cadmium is and if it's you know in all the fractions or just in one of those fractions. The results are in. Fraction one, we can see oh, it's got a little bit of cadmium in it, but I, I'd call it, you know, it's starting to get to trace levels of cadmium. Yeah, it looks like it was all nickel metal, but it's just because the nickel was in contact with the cadmium that, you know, some cadmium probably rubbed off on it. So there is some cadmium in there, so I have to treat that as toxic waste and store it appropriately, but I won't be using it, um, you know, in the rest of the synthesis. This fraction has a lot of uh, cadmium, and there's not a lot of cadmium in this blue solution. So actually, the ammonia did work pretty damn effectively at, at separating out the cadmium. I'm gonna dissolve up all that solid, make it slightly acidic, and then, woo, don't break, thank you. We've reached the end of the day, but I feel like we've done something here. We've, we've done good. Uh, the, the hydrogen sulfide generator is cooling down. Yeah, just pushing a lot of air through it still. So I'm um, bubbling the last of that hydrogen sulfide through the um, solution. It's impossible to tell <laughs> if we precipitated out all the cadmium or not. I'll come back another day and um, hopefully all that cadmium sulfide has settled out nicely. I'm not entirely sure it will, but yeah, <laughs> we can only hope. All right, here we are a week later. Bit of glassware in the trash zone, the cadmium trash zone. This is good news. Well, sort of. I mean, we'll start with the good news. You can see through that solution, it's still green. So you can see all those nickel ions are still in solution. All our yellow material, which is unfortunately the thing we want, has settled out. Which, so that that's good. Um, there's really not a lot of it there, which you know starts to ask the question: Where did all the cadmium go? But let's um, you know not complain too much let's just recover this yellow solid and then we can weigh it and then then we can start asking where the hell did the cadmium go all right
right, and here we are with a whopping 50 to 60 milligrams of cadmium sulfide. You, you might be thinking I'd be annoyed uh, having spent multiple days across multiple weeks dealing with multiple different poisons to end up with uh, 60 milligrams of product. And you'd be 100% correct. I am very upset. In fact, I'd go so far to say as I'm furious. What the fuck? Where is my cadmium? I... I'm getting really sick of this. <laughs> um, it's not very much product. All right, uh, I've given it some thought, and even though we've generated a bit of a glassware goddamn graveyard here in our, our heavy metal toxic section, I'm not satisfied with our 50 migs or less of uh, cadmium sulfide. So what I think might have happened is that um, it's too acidic. Looking it up, uh, cadmium sulfide can dissolve into the nitric acid. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's a bit tenuous, but um, I'm thinking maybe if I if I make this neutral again with just some sodium bicarbonate and then make it slightly acidic, just a little bit acidic, and then we once again... <sighs> You can tell how hesitant I am to do this because it's just not that pleasant. Um, we're going to break out the um, candle and sulfur mixture and uh, generate some more hydrogen sulfide. I think this stuff is still good to go, so I'm just going to reheat this same goddamn awful flask uh, rather than clean it. <laughs> um, and hopefully that will generate more hydrogen sulfide, which we can bubble through our, our mixture, which is going to be at the correct pH for the cadmium sulfide to precipitate. That's what I want. I'm trying to manifest it here. I'm just saying what's going to happen, and then it's going to happen. At least we can use all the same glassware, because it's just been sitting here waiting for me <laughs> to think about what the fuck I'm doing next. back with the uh, hydrogen sulfide generator. It's just running in some bleach at the moment while it warms up. We have our, our cadmium, supposed cadmium solution sitting here. That's only slightly acidic. Concentration of acid is quite low. It's only got a small amount of sulfuric acid. Oh, also, the other notable difference is this time I am using the argon cylinder. Did I have a flow rate monitor thing? I did at some point, didn't I? I don't know where that's gone, but um, we're just doing it straight out of the regulator, which is a little bit bit hardcore but uh, yeah so that's what's pushing the, the sulfide through which is a little bit safer in terms of uh, flammability and explosiveness compared to pumping air into the uh, flammable gas <laughs> now once this warms up we'll get our lead nitrate test paper out to test when we're actually generating the sulfide and then we'll switch it over to our cadmium solution Quite a bit of uh, hydrogen sulfide bubbling, but uh, I've stopped everything. It's all cooled down now. The generator worked great once again, and we've got some precipitate. Once again, not a whole lot. Um, looks like more than we had before, but um, it was a very, very low bar <laughs> to exceed. So we may have tripled our yield, but um, it's still only pushing 100 milligrams. <laughs> Fuck me. The method seems to work up, up to a point. It sort of reaches... 1% yield and then sort of stagnates and um, I don't really get it um, but uh, what what can we do I'm just gonna let this settle out and um, filter it off and then have a little bit of a cry is it re-dissolving into solution is that what's happening because there's a week between me precipitating out this cadmium sulfide and then filtering it both times there's been that week gap and is it re-dissolving back into solution or is it just settling out and that's how much product was initially there Cause there's fuck all in there again. What's going on? Is someone pranking me? Is this a prank? Am I on camera? Oh my God. It's all a prank. It explains so much. It explains so much. It all makes sense.
And I was right, we have dramatically increased our yields this time uh, with a whopping 390 milligrams on top of the 50 milligrams we had previously, which uh, takes our total yield up to just over 400 milligrams. I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna pretend to be okay with this. We'll round it up to half a gram, fuck it. Half a gram of uh, cadmium sulfide, free of nickel. You see that green coloration in there? So all our nickel ions are still in solution. So we have pure cadmium here as the form of cadmium sulfide. So now all we have to do is buddy clean up. It's all going into the container, buddy hell. After six weeks or so, I finally have my bench space back. And all we're left with is three uh, nickel cadmium cells, a bit of solid cadmium waste that's mostly the steel casing of the battery, fucked up flask, which I still haven't cleaned, a whole lot of cadmium waste, and our product, uh, the cadmium sulfide. And once again, I proved just because a project is successful in its goals doesn't mean it can't be a fucking disaster still. Oh, and, and apart from this, I still have all this <laughs> glassware to clean. This has been fun, I suppose. Fun's a word for it. <laughs> Please subscribe if you haven't. <laughs> subscribe, take the pain away.